Boo! Wow. <laughs> How interesting. Uh, we haven't done a live in no, ages. We no. have had a couple of Zoom conversations. Yes, we have. Yes, Thomas. And for me, this is my first live in quite a while. So, I'm so excited to have a conversation with my lovely dear friend Kerry today. Hello from everyone. Galartic. Galartic, yes. And we uh, <sighs> want to talk about your work uh -huh. as an artist. Yes. And also how did this beautiful being come to life? Merlin. Merlin, the wizard. What do you want to talk about first? Let's talk about what what is um, what inspired you to do the artwork? The any artwork. kind of artwork. Any kind of artwork. It was well at school. I enjoyed art, mm -hmm. and obviously life got in the way. Gone through life, and it wasn't until I really woke up to who I truly was. I just wanted to pick up a paintbrush. So I picked up a paintbrush and from there it just developed and I started going into the sacred geometry because I love sacred geometry. See, this is where it really becomes very, very interesting, mm -hmm. the sacred geometry. And we'll come back to yeah, that yeah, in a minute. we will. So there's sacred geometry in my artwork, but I also use a crystal mix. So I am pulled intuitively to crystals that are used specifically for that sacred geometry. I cleanse them, etc. And then I ask permission of that crystal to crush it into a mix. Wow. And I place that crystal mix in my artwork. So I don't know if you can really see it here. So there's like a crystal mix of over like 50 crystals that's in this painting in sacred geometry. It's pretty cool. You have made a, uh, Kerry has made a video of the process. Yes, I've made a video so of it. So yeah. I will link it again um, in the comments or after we put this video up. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, um, now what I'm fascinated about is, did you actually have a vision of how it's going to look or how did, how did Merlin come about? So Merlin came about, when I started open, opening my third eye intuitively, I started getting vision, visions of what future paintings would look like or paintings that I should be doing would look like. So I seen this painting and I doodled this painting in my visual book about two years prior to painting Merlin. Wow. And then intuitively I felt it was time to paint him. And then it, I felt intuitively who the painting was to go to. So I go with flow when it comes to the paintings. And I just feel called right now. It's time to get that painting out. Now it's time to get that painting into the collective. That energy, that frequency, that vibration. It's time. And what's really interesting about the paintings is that they bring a healing. Yes, yes. Into the energy field, but also into the collective about certain aspects. So if you look up Merlin and the history of Merlin, um, you'll notice that there's some emotions with regards to that. And, do I need to say anymore? <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, like I said before, Merlin for me has always had a special, a special place without actually even knowing years and years ago what I'm going to get myself into mm -hmm. thinking about Merlin energy. And I didn't know what Merlin energy really means, but the figure of Merlin has always been with me for a very long time. Thank you everybody for joining us. I haven't got my glasses. Can we say hello to everybody? Hello! If you have any questions, please write the questions and let's see if we can answer them. Yeah. So, but what I would like to know is, can you share with us a little bit about the sacred geometry okay. that is in the background of the actual picture? So, tell us a bit about the flower of life, for example. So, the flower of life is literally a symbol. If you go back through history, if you go to Egyptian, if you go to the Mayan, there's all this symbol, it's flower of life. And it is a huge part of the creation of life. Mm -hmm. Some people like to call it the, the flower, the sacred flower. Okay, the creation, the flower of life. Um, <clears throat> and it holds a frequency and a vibration. So if you look at, how can I put this in simple terms? 
if you look at the makeup of the universe mm -hmm. and how that comes together in a geometric way, a geometric pattern, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you will see like the energy lines, the earth grid, etc. It's very much like this. So basically, with any sacred geometry, the way I understand it is that all of the sacred geometry has been perceived on the level of the consciousness it, yeah. of people who have sort of had a more intuitive way of mm -hmm. being, who were connected with their what we would call higher self. So as soon as we tap into consciousness, visions start to come in mm -hmm. and the energy and the frequency of the universe can be represented mm -hmm. through all the different geometrical forms and everything has got its meaning. Yeah. And that's how you would place the flower of life. The flower of life. In, in mm -hmm. a simple, in another way, um, what I remember is when I first started meditating, there was something called primordial sound technique, which was basically a specific meditation practice that you use to start to connect to your own consciousness. And by going through your own consciousness, you started to open the sensory pathways up mm -hmm. to listen to the sound of the cosmos, the sound of the universe. Mm -hmm. And that's the primordial sound of nature. And the most commonly known sound, of course, is the sound Om. Om. Mm Aum. -hmm. Um, A-U-M, mm -hmm. not O-M, which is the beginning of creation, continuation of creation, creation. and then... Mm -hmm the dissolving of the creation and then this whole process starts again. So we have spoken about <clears throat> the flower of life. There are these symbols as well, mm -hmm. the swirly ones. The swirly ones. So you could say that's like the Fibonacci sequence. Again, the creation, it's in absolutely everything. Yes. But the, if I can show you, excuse me guys. Right. So if you look at the painting, you might not be able to see it here. <clears throat> So, if you look at the time lapse, there's also a Celtic cross, but these symbols here are also in relation to the Avalon key.
transformation, sacred geometry, alchemy. Mm -hmm. It's all about transformation. Transformation. And change. Yeah, it's transformation and change. And before I work on or start on these paintings, I go through the emotions of what that painting is going to create within people's energy fields. So what happened when you went through this? Can you tell us a bit about your process? There was a lot of shadow work that went on behind the scenes. Can you sort of share? There was a lot of belief systems with regards to myself, with regards to the self-love, with regards to believing in myself. Mm. I had to let go of certain aspects of trauma in relation to my mother, my mother wound, that feminine energy. It was um, not being fearful of stepping into who I truly am and allowing myself to be seen. Yeah. And it's interesting because as I was doing this painting, I was like, I don't know if I have the capability to do this painting. Like there was a lot of resistance. Like, I don't know if I can paint Merlin. And even when I was painting Merlin, I was like, oh my God, I hope he doesn't look like a Merlin from Wish. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like even, even when I started him, I was panicking going, oh my God, it looks like Merlin from Wish. And I was like, oh my God, it looks like he's been on a massive bender. Like, <laughs> But I had to trust in the biggest lesson that an energy that I felt before this painting was complete was the the power of trust and flow yeah. and allowing yourself just to do what you need to do, not question anything. Yeah. And that's been a big, big lesson. Yeah. And also, um, this is in general, I believe, mm -hmm. with artwork in general, it is not so much the actual physical appearance of the artwork. No. It's the energy, it's the, the frequency energy. Yeah. that actually is emanated or emanates from mm -hmm. that artwork that is crucial. Yeah, it's crucial. And when I was painting this beautiful painting, even, even I'm like, did I paint that? <laughs> um, <laughs> the energy of Merlin... I could feel his energy yeah. watch me paint. So it's yeah. almost like I was being guided by the man himself, who, by the way, <laughs> was very grumpy kind of energy when he came in. And then by the time we finished, I think he got fed up with me. He was used to my, my absolute cheek. <laughs> 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 so we became, we became buddies. So... It was an absolute beautiful experience painting this painting. It was one of the most powerful paintings that I've ever created. And, you know, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't been to art school. I haven't done an art degree. I'm not, you know, qualified artist if you want to put a label on it. I literally just channel mm. energy and transmissions and this is what is created when mm. I do that. I haven't... Mm. Mm. It's not because I went and studied and I've got massive qualifications in art and the thing is you know and what i say to beautiful souls out there like if you're feeling called to pick up a paintbrush if you're feeling called to to um draw or sing or dance do it because why 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 are you holding yourself back yes and there's some saying that comes to my mind is like Imperfect action is better than perfect inaction. Yeah. So, and again, it's not about the technique. And what, what I truly believe is we are being asked to step into our own truth, mm -hmm. to tap into our own wisdom pool, to trust ourselves rather than trusting this guru or that guru, trusting this book or reading that book. It's about inquiring knowledge that comes from deep within on yeah. the level of consciousness yes and this goes back to my early days where i was living in the ashram one of the first things i sort of sat for quite a while which was this understanding from the vedic tradition that um, knowledge is structured in consciousness and knowledge is different in different states of consciousness mm -hmm. what does that actually mean it means to me in essence we have everything that we need to know within 
our own field of consciousness mm -hmm. but it's allowing that energy to flow allowing that creativity to flow and i really really can't thank you enough for bringing merlin to life and for bringing merlin to the center to the awakening alchemy retreat center mm -hmm. here in scotland and for enriching the space enriching us um with its energy and this all happened around the same time when we had our Merlin retreat. So even it sort of was it parallel? Mm -hmm. or it sort of developed parallel. Yeah, it did. To sort of um, invite, or we had a group of people here for a Merlin retreat, which was all about alchemy, um, transforming old belief systems into new patterns, taking on new ideas creating potions because it's all about cooking changing mm. modifying alchemizing and this is what the artwork does and it is very very uh, powerful especially oh one thing can we just ask um carrie to share a bit about the crystals that are in there Oh, the crystals, okay. So, the crystal mix, I can't name all of them. No, but just... Use. Yeah, okay, so the crystals, the crystal mix that I've used in this painting, I was called to use Merlinite, is definitely one of the main crystals that I was pulled to use. Obviously, mm -hmm. I'm repeating myself. And then quartz, selenite, um, shungite. shungite's in there as well, and then there's things like shak and then there's purpurite, amethyst, like every single painting that I've created has an energy and a frequency and I have used literally every single painting's crystal mix so there's well over 50, I can't, I honestly cannot name every single one but there's every single crystal mix that I've used in all my paintings mm -hmm. are literally in this painting and I've added merlinite on top to make it unique so it has that alchemy it has that potion it has everything that needs to be in there mm -hmm. on a frequency level mm -hmm. but not only that this painting is connected to the lionsgate painting that i did this painting is connected to the dragon column painting it's yeah. connected to all my paintings even right back to my first painting of philip joe the arcturian it's all Linked. in here it's mm. all like Fantastic. Yeah. So, if people want to get a print of this, yes, is that possible? Yes, it's possible. Print isn't on my website as yet, but it's coming because okay. when we created it, we couldn't get an actual good photo of it exactly. to get a print because of the sunlight. I like to get really good pictures of my paintings in the sunlight, so you can see the geometry. Yeah. Um. So we're gonna get that sorted. So if anybody wants a print of this Merlin painting, they can go to my website and they can join the email list. Can you tell us the website? Uh huh. www.galartic.com. Galartic. Galartic. See what I did there? Yeah. Not galactic. No. You know, I know. Art. Very clever. <laughs> Very clever. Yeah. Okay, so it's G A L A R T I C dot com. And you've got a TikTok account as well. I've got a TikTok find. account which I just created and I'm creating TikToks as much as I can to really talk about who I am. Yes. I think that's one of the things that um I must admit I have been quiet, pretty much quiet on my own channel for quite a while. It's mainly because you know, the content that I have on my channel is very much linked to physical well-being. Mm -hmm. But there is another side of me mm -hmm. which is so strong, which is actually the understanding that unless we expand, we grow, we expand in consciousness, physical health is not possible. But I have been procrastinating to actually be myself mm -hmm. and to just sort of talk about that aspect so this was a wonderful opportunity Kerry for me to sort of get back onto the bandwagon yeah sort of it's connecting. time brother it's I know. time it's like you know it's like challenges all the time it's like oh my god yeah. what do I have to say I haven't got anything to say yeah like like I said to everybody here don't be fearful about picking up a paintbrush if you're if you're feeling deep within you 
oh, this is my passion and I want to do this passion, then do it. Don't hold yourself back. Because painting was my passion in my younger days. And I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to get a paintbrush and I'm just going to paint. And then this is what I'm painting now. Yeah. This is what I'm painting now. Never, ever hold yourself back. So never, ever hold yourself back, Thomas. Yes, yeah. Get on here get and on. talk about everything that you are and your knowledge and your wisdom because the people out there need it. Yes. Good. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> I am doing another painting. Tell us about it. So I can't say too much about it, okay. obviously. Okay. I can talk about it once it's completed. Okay. But obviously this painting is going to be connected into this other painting. Because I work on energies, etc. And um, for those that maybe don't know what an Arcturian is, look it up. It's a star being. So I'm working on a star being painting. The next, Ooh. yeah, the next one. It's really cool. There's certain aspects in there that I can't really talk about That's just fine. now because it's, it's um, yeah, until it's out into the collective, then I can talk about it. Cool. It's top secret. Top secret. <laughs> top secret painting. I like this. <laughs> hmm? Any questions? Yeah. How do you check I have the to question? Get, I don't know, I have to get... Right, hold on. Sorry, Gary. Can you help us? I have my no class. idea. Interact, right, hold on. Just bear with us, guys. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there is any questions. No questions. Sorry. But anyway, thank you everybody so much for joining and, um, yeah, for just being here today and for listening to us and listening us babbling along mm -hmm. bubbling or babbling 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 i must say carrie is just being around carrie is like a dose of the shits <laughs> a dose of endorphins <laughs> that rush through your system Ooh. and it's so healing and we don't laugh enough <laughs> We don't laugh enough in this world, do we? No, we don't. No, that's why it's that's, so refreshing. Yeah, and that's what I'm making my TikToks about. Laughing, like just being silly. Let your inner child play. You've got to let your inner child play. You've got to. I'm not playful. What are you talking about? You are about? playful. What a load of rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're, caught, you're talking nonsense now. So thank you, everybody. We love you and we leave you. <laughs> We're going to hang up, but we don't know how know. to hang up. Hang up? <laughs> you no, hang up. You hang up. No, you hang up. You hang up. <laughs> how do you hang up? How do you hang up? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody help us. We're still checking how to... Hold on, sorry, Thomas is... Ed now. Right, thank you for watching. Love you, bye!